LeBron James Nobody in the history of the NBA has had a career as long and as illustrious as LeBron James. There are so many memorable moments, so many memes, so many stories about LeBron that I believe his legacy can be used as a metaphor to describe a lot of different things. So in this video, I will use the story of one of the greatest basketball players of all time to tell the story of one of the greatest gene editing tools of all time. CRISPR LeBron James comes from humble beginnings, as hashtag the kid from Akron. CRISPR too comes from humble beginnings. It comes from the Ohio of the biology world, bacteria. LeBron was drafted by his home team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he was essential for keeping that sorry Cavs team alive against opposing forces in the NBA. CRISPR wasn't drafted by bacteria, but it is every bit as essential as LeBron for keeping sorry bacteria alive against much more powerful opponents such as viruses. Early stage LeBron and early stage CRISPR were both renowned for their destructive powers. Young LeBron had an incredible ability to get to the rim at will and destroy the rim. Now imagine that the rim isn't really a rim but a virus's DNA. And imagine that young LeBron is CRISPR. Because CRISPR, like LeBron, has a special ability to hone in on a virus's DNA and destroy that segment of DNA, thereby destroying the virus and keeping the bacteria alive. CRISPR and LeBron's destructive abilities are possible because CRISPR and LeBron are both built different. CRISPR is made up of three components, all of which bear resemblance to various parts of LeBron's body. Two of these components are RNA molecules called CRISPR RNA and tracer RNA. These RNA molecules are like LeBron's left and right eyes. They work as a pair to guide the third component of CRISPR to the virus's DNA. These RNA molecules are extremely precise when it comes to locating and binding to a segment of DNA. Just like how LeBron's Hawkeyes make him extremely precise whenever he drives to the rim. The third and final component of CRISPR is a large protein called a Cas protein, which is a lot like LeBron's muscular and sweaty body. This Cas protein selectively destroys the virus DNA that the RNA molecules guided it to. Just like how LeBron's body selectively destroys the rim that his eyes have guided him to. LeBron eventually felt like his hooping abilities were being wasted in a mediocre Cavs team and he took his talents to South Beach. Similarly, scientists felt like CRISPR's special ability to destroy DNA with high accuracy was being wasted in bacteria and started inserting CRISPR into human cells instead, a much more attractive destination. LeBron became a completely different beast during his time in Miami. He became more efficient. He became a student of the game. CRISPR also became a completely different beast in human cells. CRISPR became more efficient as scientists combined the two RNA molecules, tracer RNA and CRISPR RNA, into a single RNA molecule called the guide RNA. This guide RNA was no longer used to locate virus DNA. Instead, it was used to seek out parts of human DNA that were responsible for genetic diseases. Miami LeBron was in his peak physical condition and he ruthlessly destroyed his opponents before knocking them out of the playoffs. The cast protein of CRISPR was also optimized to become a killing machine. And once the guide RNA guided the cast protein to a mutated gene, the cast protein would ruthlessly destroy the gene that was responsible for genetic diseases. This sort of genetic destruction is known as a knockout in scientific terms. LeBron's back-to-back -back championships in Miami and CRISPR's ability to knock out unwanted genes in human cells marked the first monumental achievements in both LeBron and CRISPR's careers. But winning a ring when you're part of a super team is easy. Genetically modifying human cells in a Petri dish is easy peasy. 
The true measure of an athlete and a gene editing tool's greatness is to push the boundaries of what we thought was possible, to do the impossible. LeBron did what everybody thought was impossible. He beat the 73-9 Warriors and overcame a 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals. CRISPR also did the impossible. It treated the notoriously hard to treat sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia occurs due to a genetic mutation in your body where your stem cells produce way too many of these sickle-shaped red blood cells. These sickle-shaped red blood cells have a tendency to clump together and clog the blood vessels in your body, restricting the blood flow. When blood flow is restricted, it results in immense physical pain and can also lead to more dangerous complications like stroke. CRISPR was used to correct this genetic disease by genetically modifying the stem cells that produce red blood cells. By knocking out a gene called BCL11A, stem cells are able to produce more healthy-shaped red blood cells, decreasing the proportion of sickle-shaped red blood cells and curing the disease. There are many versions of LeBron. You've got the insanely athletic force of nature LeBron, You've got the complete player, facilitator LeBron, and now you've got the experienced and wise Le Father Time LeBron. Similarly, there are now three versions of CRISPR which share similarities with these three different versions of LeBron. The destructive version of CRISPR that we've been talking about up till now shares the most similarities with LeBron in his first prime. This kind of CRISPR is called a nuclease editor. A nuclease editor is basically a delete key because it latches on to bad genes using the guide RNA and sends these genes to the goddamn shadow realm using the destructive Cas protein. The second generation of CRISPR, called a base editor, shares the most similarities with LeBron in his second prime because this is when LeBron and CRISPR both became facilitators. The Cas protein of a base editor is attached to another kind of protein called an enzyme. This enzyme is Kyrie Irving, and this Cas protein, aka LeBron, takes a step back and facilitates so that Kyrie can start cooking. Let him cook now! Just like how Kyrie uses the space provided by LeBron to get deep into his bag, the enzyme attached to a Cas protein uses the space provided by the Cas protein to edit a sequence of DNA. Kyrie isn't a delete key. Instead, he provides small yet critical edits, just like an autocorrect. Basically, base editors are useful when a gene is only slightly mutated, and a small edit is preferable to downright destruction. Lastly, the most recent version of CRISPR, called a prime editor, shares a lot of similarities with the most recent version of LeBron. These are the smartest, most cerebral versions of LeBron and CRISPR so far. Current LeBron is basically le GM at this point, and he's able to build a completely new team roster from the bottom up. Similarly, third gen CRISPR is a GM too, because it's able to build completely new DNA sequences from the bottom up. This is useful when you're trying to insert a new gene, such as the clutch gene, into a patient that doesn't originally have this gene. Both LeBron and CRISPR constantly up their games. They always find new ways to hit new primes. And that's what makes them, in my opinion, the greatest of all time.